what I'll be doing is uh, soft hammer uh, uh, blade percussion using a billet. I have a piece of uh, Georgetown flint from Texas and uh, where I've removed one uh, large billet flake. Uh, the material is, uh, has not been heat treated. This technique uh, requires uh, a striking of horse uh, along the uh, central ridge. Uh, the uh, ridge uh, directs the uh, force. The uh, difference uh, is uh, the striking platform on a um, uh, billet flake as opposed to a hard hammer flake is much smaller. It's, uh, and uh, the blades are usually uh, much longer and uh, more or less uh, parallel sided. This uh, technique does require uh, striking flakes from a prepared platform. The platform could be prepared by either percussion uh, or else uh, in uh, the manner I do, I use uh, pressure. It's I've already uh, removed some pressure flakes uh, to, to give the, uh, this uh, ridge uh, the proper uh, alignment. It has to be straight or slightly curved. If it's uh, concave, then the force will be driven into the uh, core and uh, my effort will be wasted. So I'll just grind the uh, platform. Ah, there's a good uh, flake that removed uh, quite uh, a large uh, portion of the distal end. But uh, it's quite typical of the initial uh, first uh, uh, blade flake. Uh, so now I have created one, two ridges that I will follow uh, for when I remove the uh, next uh, blades. But first, I have to remove a little bit of uh, overhang, which was created by the uh, negative bulb of percussion. So, and you notice I'm using a different uh, style of pressure flaking than uh, Jason. I use a uh, very short pressure flaker. And it's padded, uh, protects my hand. The uh, padding protects my hand from uh, any da damage. So I have to reinforce the uh, platform or else it'll crush when I deliver the blow. blow. I can hold it in my hand as is, but I uh, don't want to take the risk. So, and you really don't need a, a lot of uh, force when you're striking off blades. Oh, uh, there's another one. I, except uh, one problem, I uh, uh, hit the, um, the uh, core a little bit off uh, the uh, platform and it, uh, the uh, blade <laughs> went off, uh, off the uh, ridge. And these kinds of blades could be used as is or retouched uh, on the, uh, from the ventral to the uh, dorsal surf surface and used as cutting or scraping or general purpose tools. And uh, some uh, microscopic uh, studies uh, showed that uh, there was a sheen developed along the sharp edge. And uh, it was, uh, these blades were probably used for cutting uh, grass. So, but it's a very efficient uh, means of uh, utilizing uh, the, the uh, uh, material. The material is Georgetown flint. And uh, it's quite 
It's, it's an amazing, uh, like a very efficient uh, means of utilizing, but where you find uh, this uh, technique uh, quite, uh, quite, uh, say, abundant is where there is an abundant source of flint. I, uh, for this uh, size of this uh, kind of core, I prefer a heavy um, uh, uh, billet. If I was uh, to uh, use it on uh, something, uh, uh, a billet on a uh, core this small, it uh, reduces the size of the, of the antler proportion. Oops. I didn't prepare the uh, platform. And I didn't strike the uh, core in the right angle, but the uh, my flick uh, hinged quite abruptly. And it's a common uh, uh, failure. One um, means of correcting this uh, mistake is to come and remove a blade from this uh, side. And uh, hopefully it'll uh, clear up uh, this hinge and I can uh, continue uh, removing blades from here. So. Thank you. Uh, I'll see if I can remove a, a blade from this material. This is one of the chart. It's been uh, heat treated to about 350 degrees Celsius. If it wasn't heat treated, uh, I would have a hard time uh, breaking the stone even with a hard hammer. Oh, and again. But now again, I do have uh, one ridge and another ridge. And I also have an overhang in here that has to be removed before I take off uh, the next blades.